can speak up and show just a little more enthusiasm than Right, you try making a gusher. This is hard. <laughs> oh no! I'm Claire, and this time we're gonna try to make a gourmet gusher. This is the exploratory phase. We have to figure out what these are. I had gushers once as a kid. Okay, right, I think we're gonna have to work on presentation. I think this this is not the goal. So so this it's kind of oozing, but this is a gusher. It's kind of vaguely shaped like a gem or like a jewel. They clearly have a seam running down the side, but that tells me that they're like two pieces smushed together. The center is that syrupy, sticky, kind of like pseudo liquid. I mean, it really does kind of have the texture of corn syrup, like a very, very thick syrup. Oh, I did it! They kind of have like a, like a, the texture of like a, Twizzlers, and then of course the liquid inside, which is not that much. It's not like, I wouldn't say that it's gushing. I wanna know if you can tell what the flavors are. Love gushes. Gabby grew up in Argentina, has never had a gusher. <laughs> Squishy. So it's not really liquid. It kind of reminds me of a cough drop. Mm. Yeah, what's that to love? I'd want it to taste like fruit. This is something else. I mean, I'm curious to really look at the ingredients and explore. Sugar, corn syrup, dried corn syrup, pear puree concentrate, which I find fascinating. Pear has a lot of pectin, modified cornstarch, fructose, maltodextrin, palm oil, cottonseed oil, glycerin, carrageenan, grape juice concentrate, acid, glycerides, sodium citrate, acid, vitamin C, natural flavor, potassium citrate, water, and then xanthan gum. And then they say gluten free. There has to be something. If all of these things are stabilizers and thickeners, then like they have to be stabilizing and thickening something. So there is like kind of fruit. Like are things derived from fruit in it? That gives me some clues. And now we're gonna go online, see what else we can find. Fruit gushers, occasionally just called gushers, are fruit snacks in the shape of elongated hexagonal bipyramids. The center of each gusher is a thick, sweet liquid and is surrounded by a chewy, gelatinous sugar covering. Now we have to figure out how I'm gonna make these. And I need, I need molds. Amazon has candy molds. This looks good. Yeah, so it's not quite gonna be a pyramid shape, but I think it'll be pretty close. We'll try three different methods for filling them. I mean, and I have to also work on getting like the set, the set right for the outside, so. Okay, cool, so that, that's the game plan. I hope I don't look stupid at the end of this. This is all my attempt to make that outer chewy part of the gusher. One option would be to take fruit juice and sort of naturally thicken the fruit. So what I'm gonna do is take a fruit very high in pectin, like green apple, and make a green apple jelly, and then use that as the base, add fruit juice and gelatin to that, so that I get sort of like a natural thickening effect. And now I simmer it, and that's really just to kind of extract all that pectin. And let me grab the fruit juice, because I think I have to start thinking about how I'm gonna get that liquid center inside these. It's 100% pomegranate juice, freshly squeezed blood orange juice, and it's like mango nectar. Okay, so one idea is I like take a little frozen tiny ice cube of juice and press it into the center so it suspends. And then I put them together, but like how do I make an ice cube that small? Um, I, I did have one idea, hold on. This, this might not work, I'm just warning you. I thought if I froze liquid into the straws and cut crosswise into like tiny ice cubes that maybe that would be the right size. So I'm gonna go test them and see. I need something to plug the end of these straws. You gotta make a little squash plug. Or a potato plug. <laughs> That's a good idea. Yeah, make a potato plug. <laughs> Thanks, Brad. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> That'll work. Just no one touch that. Should I, re I guess, I feel like I should reduce some of this juice now. So I'm going to strain the apple jelly. It does sort of look like, like there's gelatin in it, although it's not, it's all that pectin. Let's see what's going on here. So the blood orange juice is reduced quite a bit. Pomegranate has a ways to go. You can see how the mango's bubbling. It's kind of starting to bubble up a little bit. It started out pretty thick, so I don't have to take that one as far. The 
jellies at 220 Fahrenheit. We add the sugar and the lemon and we cook it again and we skim it and then we do the wrinkle test. I'm gonna chill this for a minute or two. Yes. Ooh, let's see how it wrinkles. Okay, so I think we're done. Ooh, see this is this is fruit pectin. Okay. Gelatin sheets tend to be a little more reliable and will set a liquid a little, with a little more clarity. Then these liquids are warm, not hot. The gelatin dissolves in warm liquid, so I'm gonna put everything on the stove. When I bring it over on the stove in a little saucepan, I'll add some of the jelly and warm it up to dissolve the gelatin, and then I'm ready to fill the molds. Each one of these represents half of a gusher that I need to like sandwich onto the back of another gusher. <sighs> There's a lot of moving parts. I'm gonna do the same thing now with the other two flavors. Mm. Okay, so I think the work for today is pretty much over. We've filled all the molds. The hard part tomorrow is like, how do we fill these things? I have some ideas, I have no idea if they'll work, um, but I'll worry about that tomorrow. My main concern is that they're, they're sticking in the mold, and I did not, um, I feel like this happened during the Twinkie process. Give it a tap. Bigger tap. It, st it sticks to the mold, it doesn't want to come out cleanly, and it's a little too soft, so it has a tendency to break apart. I have a, a contingency plan. I'm gonna try the warm water trick and see if it helps. Oh, maybe a little tray of water. It's not quite boiling. I run the risk of melting it down too much and losing like any definition um, from the molds, but I think at this point, this is the, kind of the only option. Well, it worked, <laughs> but now they're round. Now I lost all, all the facets. <laughs> now what do I do? <sighs> this is a lot harder than I thought it was gonna be. I have a shortcut in mind, so I don't have to go through that whole process again. I'm basically gonna take everything out of the molds, put them back in a saucepan, add more gelatin, and stir in the cold gelatin until it's dissolved. I'm gonna spray the molds now, put them back in the molds with a little oil underneath. And it's starting to set up, so I gotta get it in the fridge. I'm, I, feel, I feel good just from like a little finger test. Feels very firm to the touch. I think before I take them out, I should do some tests on how I'm gonna get the liquid inside. So Gabby found me like the tiniest spoon we have in the whole kitchen because I wanna try to hollow out a little piece. Let's see if I can get in there. Okay, I already give up. Um, hold on, I'm gonna use, I'm gonna see if I can use this straw to cut into the top of the gummy to see if I can channel out with it. Just to be shallow. You can speak up and show just a little more enthusiasm. Right, you try making a gusher. <laughs> this is hard. <laughs> I, I, I don't know, is this gonna work? The other thing I can try is taking the liquid that we froze inside the straws and taking like an already frozen little chip of ice and putting it inside. Let's try mango, just having to improvise. If I put in an already frozen piece and put this in the freezer just to keep it frozen and then we'll try fusing them. Okay, so this has definitely frozen. Okay, that's all. Well, okay. I can just use the syringe to inject the liquid into the already hollowed out half. Fingers crossed. There's seven from <laughs> this batch that look good. I'm gonna kind of use this extra gelatin mixture as glue. I'm just kind of dabbing it around the edges and then I kind of mush the two sides together. Okay, like I would say that that didn't not work. That is a more or less three-dimensional hollowed out gusher. This is that reduced pomegranate juice. I'm gonna use a syringe and fill them up. Okay, like it's kind of working. So here, I want you guys to take those and try. See what happens. Rick has the most skeptical look on his face. I mean, I, I like I like the flavor a lot. Uh -huh. um, I want the center to be a little bit 
like have a little more body. Thicker. thicker. Yeah. Yeah. What if I did pomegranate molasses? That would be better. as the yeah. filling. Because it's kind of more of a squirter and not a gusher. Gusher. Yeah. My plan is to unmold all of the set halves that I have in the fridge, hollow them out. The problem before was that the pomegranate juice was really, really thin even after we had cooked it down. So my thought was to use a product called pomegranate molasses. So this is much thicker. You can see it coats the back of a spoon easily. I'm just gonna take the two hollowed out sides, fuse them together and use the syringe to inject the filling. Okay, this one appeared to work really well. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! Gosh, you're overboard. Last one. Okay. You can see they're totally sealed all the way around and they have like awesome, awesome sharp edges. You can see the filling in there, which is kind of cool. So before it falls apart, I'm going to eat it. To me, that's it. It's like you get such a bursting sensation from the pomegranate molasses inside. It's really fun. It's like kind of a surprise. It's fun to eat. The texture on the outside is definitely better. So I'm hoping I did right by them in recreating our own version. Oh, I gushed. I the, really like the tartness. Wow. It's surprising. It's actually really delicious. It's good, right? Yeah, it's good. I like that the flavor actually tastes real and not synthetic. Love the shape. Your, your poker face is impressive. I could eat an entire package of those. Uh -huh. The only concern for me, yeah, it's a little, a little too delicate. Yeah, a little too delicate. Like, I think, that, I think you're you right. can't go putting a pack of those in your pocket. <laughs> Definitely not. No, take this uh, the right way. Okay. But uh, I can take it. I think you did a better job than I thought you were gonna. Oh no! Thanks. You were do, Thank you. Because it's a tricky one. I like being underestimated. <laughs> yes. then, you, then you come out on top. <laughs> I learned that from you, Claire. <laughs> totally. Okay. Well, thanks. Brad. I think you nailed it. Here's how you make a gourmet gusher. Cut three and a half pounds green apples into two inch pieces. Add to large pot with six and a third cups cold water. Simmer 30 minutes. Strain liquid and stir in four and two thirds cups sugar and three tablespoons lemon juice. Boil until passes the wrinkle test. Cool. Meanwhile, cook four cups juice in medium saucepan until reduced to one cup. Sprinkle two tablespoons powdered gelatin over half cup cold water in bowl and soften 10 minutes. Combine half cup apple jelly, half cup reduced fruit juice, and gelatin in saucepan and dissolve over low heat. Mist small hexagonal candy molds with nonstick spray and fill with gelatin mixture. Reserve half cup gelatin mixture for later. Chill overnight. Dip the mold into hot water five seconds. Pop out gush pads. Use a plastic straw or paring knife to carve out eighth teaspoon cavity. Chill 15 minutes. Melt reserve gelatin in saucepan. Use a small paintbrush to dab melted gelatin around edges. Align two halves and press to seal. Paint around sides to seal. Repeat until all gushers are assembled. Chill 20 minutes. Use a small syringe to inject pomegranate molasses into gusher center. Keep chilled and enjoy. No, oh, thank you. You know, Brad does not give gratuitous compliments, so I, I take that to heart. Especially about gusher. Right, <laughs> right.